Well, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to MDGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is Model Green Stompy for Dominaria Standard. So there are so many good uh, green creatures in Dominaria. It's kind of insane. Like, at least half this deck almost is just new creatures from Dominaria. Lanamore Elves is back. We've got new stuff like, uh, you know, Steel Leaf Champion, stuff like that. Just a lot of really good value creatures that are very powerful, super cheap on the curve if you're in just mono green, uh, and can definitely do some real damage. But of course, before I get into the video, make sure you like the video if you like it. Helps us out a lot, helps keep the channel growing, and helps keep the content flowing. Uh, but let's jump right, right into here. Again, we have the new layout uh, for the new deck text here. Starting with the value creatures. We have lots of value creatures here, starting with Llanowar Elves. It's back. It's a good card. It's in here. It's a four of. A one mana, one one. It can tap and add one green to your mana pool, or I guess just one green to you, um, since mana pool isn't on the card anymore. Uh, very good, very straightforward, very uh, good at being able to ramp you into your other big spa uh, bombs. Moving on here, we have a uh, four resilient Kinra, a two mana, two two jackal wizard. With uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, target creature gets X plus X until end of turn where X is resilient Kinra's power. You can also eternalize this for six, bringing it back as a four four with the same ability, which means that if it does die the first time through trades or something like that, it comes back and has the same ability on another creature on your side of the field, which I really, really do like. Um, especially because there's so much removal in the format, resilient Kinra is, again, resilient. Uh, moving on to a card I feel like some people are overlooking and instead putting a Merfolk Branchwalker in this slot. Untamed Kavu is super good and standard. I feel like people are kind of overlooking this for, for some reason. It's a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two with Kicker for 3. It also has Vigilance and Trample, and if it was kicked, it comes in the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So, a 2-2 two -two for 2 with Vigilance and Trample is very, very good, especially with the other like cards in our actual deck list here. And if it gets kicked for 5 mana, it's a 5-5 five -five that has Vigilance and Trample. That's very good, especially in the mid and late game for two different reasons. So, I think Untamed Kavu is probably a bit better for me uh, than Merfolk Branchwalker, even though Branchwalker can help hopefully like you know thin your deck a little bit and throw like the resilient Kinra into the graveyard. Because we don't have too much graveyard recursion besides the Kinra, I think uh, the Kavu here is just a better card overall for us in this particular list. However, that's not to say that Explore is out of the uh, deck entirely. We do have four Jade Light Ranger here, still a fantastic card, a three mana two one. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, Explore, then Explore again. The reason this is in here is because the double Explore, hopefully giving this the power to be a four three. Uh, which is very, very good. If not, it's a 3-2, which is fine, uh, which means we can kind of hopefully get a land and filter through our deck a little bit. Jade Light Ranger is still pretty decent uh, on the curve for 3 mana, though. Another good 3 mana drop for us is Ronas the Indomitable. Because we have a lot of stuff that can be 4-4 four, four entering the battlefield, Ronas the Indomitable might just be coming into the battlefield turned on on, like, turn 3 or 4. Um, it's a Death Touch Indestructible, and... It Ronas the Indomitable can't attack or block unless you control another creature with power 4 or greater. You can pay 2, another target creature gets plus 2, plus 0, and gains Trample until end of turn. Trample, very important here. We gotta get through our opponent's creatures as quickly as possible. Something to uh, turn on Ronas if we have a turn 4 play with Ronas is Steel Leaf Champion, a card from Dominaria that is ridiculously powerful here. A 3 mana 5 4 Elf Knight. Uh, Steel Leaf Champion can be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, which basically means um, if you have like mana dorks on your side of the field, uh, Steel Leaf Champion is gonna come through and do some damage to your face. Uh, this is a great card, especially against another matchup or another uh, mono green matchup or a ramp deck uh, where they're going to have a lot of mana producers first. Steel Leaf Champion is going to get right over those or right through them, I guess, uh, and do direct damage. And that is all the value creatures. Basically, what I'm saying is for value, you mean for, th for three mana, you basically have the entire deck here. It's very, very powerful, very good. Uh, but let's see what we can do with the actual closures here, starting with Virtuous Gear Hulk. This is a five mana, four, four Trampler construct. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put four or distribute for plus and plus some counters among any number of target creatures you control. So this can be an 8-8 eight, eight Trampler, or we can have, uh, you know, our land or elves become a 4-4 four, four, or 5-5, five, five, stuff like that. Um, Vertibus Gear Hook is very, very powerful at being able to hopefully widen our board state a little bit, as well as make our board state just overall more impactful. And another card, because we basically will play, be able to play this for just two mana, is Galta the Primal Hunger. Because we have so many cards in here with such high power, um, Galta is going to be coming in really, really early. It is a you know, 12 mana, 12, 12, legendary creature, elder dinosaur. Uh, it costs X less to cast where X is the total power of creatures you control, and it has trample. So getting to 10 here is actually just, uh, you know, two Steel Leaf champions or like a Ronas and a Steel Leaf, something like that. Um, super powerful, very bad in the early game if you get it because uh, you definitely will be holding it in your hand for a while. But by turn five, this should be a giant bomb hitting the battlefield. Again, it also has trample, which means if your opponent doesn't have any blockers or has very few like low toughness blockers, God is gonna get in for some serious damage. 
But that is all of the creatures in the deck. There are 29 in total. This is definitely a mono green stompy deck at its heart. Uh, let's go to the actual spells and artifacts here, starting with one treasure map. The only reason this card is in here is to helpfully kind of help sift through some lands, some early game stuff like a land warrior elf after like turn four. Uh, we want to make sure we get into lands as quickly as possible. And actually, treasure map turns into land uh, a land and gives us three treasures as well once it's flipped. But it's a two man artifact. We can pay one, tap it, scry, put a landmark counter on it. Uh, then if there are three more, we flip it, transform it, and get three treasure tokens, and the treasure cove that's flipped from this can you be used to sack a treasure and draw a card as well. So if we're low on like card advantage, treasure map can kind of help us out as well. Uh, moving on here though, we have three Ronus's Monument. This card is super good, especially with the Untamed Kabu here. Again, it's a Vigilance Trampler, so Ronus's Monument is a three mana legendary artifact. Green creature spells you cast cost one colorless less to cast, turning the Kabu into a one mana 2-2 two -two Vigilance Trampler, which is... So spicy. Uh, but whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains trample until end of turn. So this turns our Lanor Elf into a three three trampler. Or if we have a cave cavu on the battlefield, it turns it into a four four vigilance trampler, which means that the cavu is getting in for a ton of damage uh, for how little we cost to spend on it. And of course, it does have vigilance again, so it doesn't tap out for us, which is just so nice. Uh, next up here, we have two Lifecrafters Bestiary. Uh, this is basically just card draw and hopefully scrying for us. A three mana artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one, which is decent. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay green if you do draw a card. So this is basically a more like costed or balanced treasure map for us. It gives us the ability to scry every single turn, which is great. And of course, when we cast creatures, we actually get to pay mana and draw a card, which is again, super good for us. Uh, moving on here though, to hopefully get some lands out of our deck, we have two Grow from the Ashes. Now I almost didn't put this in here. I almost took this out actually, but I do think being able to thin our deck a little bit to, with some of the basic lands out of the deck uh, does help us out immensely, especially on turn four, turn five, when we need to get into more of our bombs. It's a 3 mana with kicker for 2. Search your library for a base of land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. That means untapped, by the way. And then if this was kicked for 5 mana, instead search your library for 2 basic lands, put them on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Grow from the Ashes is ridiculously powerful. I love this card. I think this card is going to be in a ton of ramp deck. I do feel like it's probably better than Hour of Promise, the one from Hour of Devastation where you actually get 2 lands coming in tapped and gives you, uh, like, 2-2 two, two zombies, which is fine, but I think here coming in untapped just means we have so much more to work with uh, on that turn, uh, which is kind of awesome. Uh, so, but that is all the spells and artifacts in the actual deck here. Let's move on to our lands really quickly. We have a one of Field of Ruin because we have, you know, Legion's Landing. We have a flipped, uh, you know, treasure map on our opponent's side of the field. Those things need to be dealt with as quickly as possible. The one of Field of Ruin is in here for that. It can tap for colorless, or we can pay to tap and sacrifice it. Destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. Each player searches his or her library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle his or her library. So, very good. Again, coming in untapped, which is decent for us. Uh, but just overall, just a solid card. Moving on here, we have... 13 basic lands, so just forest. So since this is a mono green Stompy deck, that's all you need. You just need some forests. Uh, but another card to help us out actually is four Heshep Oasis here. Coming in, tapping for colorless, or we can pay one life, tap for green, or we can pay three mana, tap, sacrifice a desert. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. And of course you activate this only during a sorcery. So turning that untamed Kavu into a five, five Vigilance Trampler, that's pretty decent. Turning our Lanor Elves into a 4-4, four -four, that's pretty good as well. So Heshep Oasis is here to hopefully get as much damage through as possible as quickly as possible on turn five, four, something like that, in that kind of uh, range there. Uh, moving on here though, we have two Memorial to Unity, and this is another card from Dominaria. Tapping, coming in tapped, tapping for green mana. We can pay three, sacrifice Memorial, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Then put the rest on the bottom of your library in any random order. So this is actually pretty good for us because it can help us kind of filter through our deck uh, without actually losing any kind of momentum because this is a land as well. Of course, the downside being is that it actually comes in tap, which means we can't use it on the turn we play it, which is kind of sad, but at the same time, if we get into, you know, a Galta or a Verdiwus Gearhulk with this card, then that's all gravy for us. Uh, moving on, though, to another card from Dominaria I really, really like, especially because we're in a mono, uh, mono uh, color strategy, is Zalfirin Void, a land that enters the battlefield, and we scry one. It adds colors to our mana pool, but it does give us the ability to scry one for basically free, and gives us, like, some colorless mana. That's great. I actually really do like this card quite a bit. Uh, I do think it's quite powerful, and I do think that uh, it probably will be undervalued a little bit in the early beginnings of the set. Um, even though it's not tapping for any kind of mana at all, it is giving you the ability to scry. So in a mono color deck, this card is quite powerful. Uh, but moving on to the last land in the list here is a one of Scavenger Grounds, tapping for colorless, paying two, sacrifice the desert, exile all cards from all graveyards. So very simple and straightforward. Um, we only have one kind of graveyard recursion with resilient Kinra. So everything else is, uh, you know, just kind of gravy for us. So if opponent does have something that is dealing with a graveyard, like Godfrost Gift, something like that, we want to use Scavenger Grounds here to hopefully get rid of that graveyard. 
but that is the full game one game plan. Um, super powerful, super impactful, very good bombs turn over turn basically. Uh, but let's go to the sideboard here and see what we can do here. Starting with another field of ruin, just in case we have those uh, you know non basic lands coming in like flipping on their side of the field. We want to make sure those are actually gone. I would include maybe another scavenger grounds in the sideboard after looking at it, but I do think uh, you know a, sca a scavenger grounds or maybe a death Gorge scavenger would probably be a better slot here instead. But right now because the meta is so young, I do want to kind of angle it towards a more removal heavy and more tempo based advantage with this sideboard. Starting with of course three blossoming defense, a one green mana instant, target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains hexproof until end of turn. So basically protecting our creature and making it a little bit larger, hopefully trading with something. So very very good with that. I'm uh, moving on to a card that if opponent does have a lot of removal, this card's really going to help us out a lot. Shaper Sanctuary, a one green mana enchantment. Whenever a creature you control becomes target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, we get to draw a card. So it's actually a may ability too, so we can kind of turn this down if we want to, if we're low on the curve as far as like running out of cards from our deck, but that's not going to happen. We're going to be drawing cards every single time Shaper Sanctuary is activated for us, so that's hopefully kind of uh, getting us another creature to draw into if our opponent does kill one of our creatures with a, with a Contempt or a Fatal Push or whatever. Moving up here, we have three Naturalize, a two-minute instant destroy target artifact or enchantment. Super simple, super straightforward. Um, it's always going to be in my sideboard, basically, if I'm playing green. <laughs> it's just really good, and of course, there's a lot of artifacts right now in uh, the actual standard environment that we really need to deal with as quickly as possible. Naturalize is going to help us do that. Moving on here, we have two Sorcerer Spyglass, a card we haven't really talked about recently uh, that's coming back in like kind of the fold here. Thanks of cards like Karn, Scion of Urza, a two-minute artifact as Sorcerer Spyglass enters the battlefield, look at opponent's hand, then choose a card name, uh, activate the abilities of Source with the chosen name can be activated unless they're mana abilities, so that's very, very good for us. Um, again, basically just shutting down a Planeswalker for us if we can. And moving on to some more bombs for us, we have Territorial Allosaur. This is a 4 mana 5-5 five, five dinosaur with kicker for 3, and when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, tar it fights another target creature. So for uh, 7 mana, we can have it fight something if it's a 5-5. Five, five. That's fine. It's uh, The reason I really have this in the main board is because I feel like it's a little slow, it's a little too expensive, and it doesn't have like Vigilance or Trample or anything else on top of this, so it does mean that it's just a 5-5 five, five for 4, which is decent, but at the same time, if you want to kick it, it's 7 mana for a 5-5 five, five, uh, that does have maybe a kill ability, but at the same time, I'm still not a big fan of that uh, in the main board. And the last two cards in here for the control matchup is Carnage Tyrant, a 6 mana 7-6. Seven, it can be countered, and it has Trample and Hexproof. Very simple and straightforward. Um, there is other cards being put into the sideboard here, if you're kind of worried about the uh, counter or control matchup here, like uh, Prowling Subopper or something like that. But I do think right now, uh, Blossoming Defense and Carnage Tyrant are just fine in the sideboard here. So let's go to the full deck layout here. On MPGO Traders, is coming to about 130 tickets, which is actually surprisingly high. Uh, mostly coming from Jade Light Ranger, uh, Carnage Tyrant, things like that. Um, Brodus the Indomino and Steel Leaf Champion are also in the like 13 to 18 ticket range as well. Uh, if you want to build this in paper, it is about 197 bucks, so just under $200, which again is super surprising considering that Mono Green Stompy is uh, one of those like deck lists that really isn't that impactful uh, just before uh, Dominaria came out. I do think though Mono Green Stompy is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the actual pool here thanks to Dominaria's inclusion in Standard. Overall this deck has the ability to be super powerful and explosive. Turn 1 Lemur Elves, turn 2 into a Jade Light Ranger or Ronas or Steel Leaf Champion, turn 3 into either a Ronas, Steel Leaf Champion or maybe even a uh, kicked Kavu if we do have another elf on the battlefield. It just kind of has the ability to go off and be explosive uh, turn over turn until your opponent is basically dead. Ronus' Monument as well being in there, hopefully making all of our 2 mana cost and 3 mana cost creatures even cheaper, except of course for Steel Leaf Champion. Um, this card is ridiculous, and I do think that it can close out a match insanely quickly for you if your opponent lets it. But that is the full deck tech, guys. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you have any suggestions for it? Please let me know right down there. We'd love to hear your opinion and thoughts on it for sure. We'll always be down there commenting back as often as I can. But of course, if you like this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got more standard deck techs coming out this week. And if you want to see me kind of like uh, testing these decks or playing these decks on stream, you can always follow me on my Twitch at SuperHinotama, which is nice as well. But that's going to do it for the video, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next standard deck tech. Peace.